Hello, welcome to Dot Next 2021. Welcome to all our customers and partners. This is my first Dot Next conference as a CEO of Nutanix, and I'm humbled and honored to be talking to you all today. Over the past nine months, I've met many of our customers and partners, mostly virtually, and I look forward to meeting more of you in person as we emerge from COVID. Over the past 18 months, COVID has wrecked havoc on our lives. Many of us have lost loved ones. Our social, cultural, and business norms have changed. We haven't met with our extended family, friends, and our coworkers. Kids haven't been to school. Our lifestyles have been altered with masks and social distancing. Throughout all of this, technology has kept us connected. Zoom has become a verb for work or to meet with friends and family. Now we just Zoom. Work from anywhere through the power of remote desktops and VDI solutions. Meet with your doctor remotely without having to physically visit them. IT has been a key enabler in helping businesses operate throughout this period. Here at Nutanix, we are no different. We have been operating with a distributed workforce for the past 18 plus months. And we expect the workforce to be distributed even post COVID. Many of our customers across the globe have adapted to the new realities and have accelerated their IT journey in partnership with Nutanix. While Vodafone, Toyota, and Seattle Children's Hospital may be in three different countries and sectors, they are all adapted to the new realities by adopting and expanding VDI solutions powered by Nutanix. Faced with unprecedented strains of a pandemic, Vodafone, the $60 billion UK telecom provider turned to virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI, to enable its workforce to work remotely. That implementation is now providing a high degree of resilience and reliability, serving approximately 50,000 concurrent employees scattered around the world. By providing flexibility for remote workers in offices or at home, Vodafone's VDI implementation, underpinned by Nutanix HCI, is helping the company breathe easier in a challenging time. Toyota, the Japanese car maker with a global footprint, had to adapt to the reality of working remotely. They're now designing their cars through their 3D CAD environment on Nutanix VDI and using these CAD models to work with manufacturing teams around the world, producing next-generation automobiles. This setup has not just given them the ability to work remotely, but also have deeper and better interactions with 3D models, replacing paper drawings. And finally, closer to home on the west coast of the United States, Seattle Children's Hospital needed an IT infrastructure that is flexible and could be scaled up and down based on patient needs. Nutanix changed the way Seattle Children's could enable its employees, going from zero employees working remotely to 4,000 remote workers across 46 sites who leverage VDI infrastructure to stay connected. Nutanix not only transformed the hospital's internal processes, enabling secure video conferencing, making group meetings and team huddles feasible, but went one step further to enable telehealth through Citrix VDI on Nutanix. We are happy that we played a part in enabling these customers and many more to navigate through the pandemic. As we all go through the journey to recovery, our focus now shifts from business resiliency to target and investments as we return to growth. 
as you return to growth, you're focused on continuing your digital transformation, modernizing your infrastructure, moving forward with your cloud strategy, and continuing to enable your distributed workforce. It is clear that public cloud is going to be a big part of your cloud strategy. However, CIO's thinking in terms of where their workloads reside has evolved over time. As you can see from this Morgan Stanley report published this summer, CIOs have gone from believing that almost half their workloads are going to be in the public cloud by 2023 to now believing that just over a third of their workloads will be in the public cloud even by 2024. That's almost a 10 percentage point drop. A lot of this evolution is driven by concerns around data governance, security, performance for edge use cases, and undeniably, public cloud costs. Now my friend Martin Casado at Andreessen Horowitz recently published a widely circulated report on this, where he noted that across 50 of the top public software companies currently utilizing cloud infrastructure, an estimated $100 billion of market value is being lost due to cloud impact on margins relative to running the infrastructure themselves. He also noted that the pattern has been remarkably consistent. If you're operating at scale, the cost of cloud can at least double your infrastructure bill. 